because no drug is perfectly safe, no drug is perfectly effective. You know, there's risk involved in taking anything. It could be an allergic reaction, whatever. So we have to realize also that there is no way that the government can protect us. And when we ask the government to protect us, it usually backfires because they can't account for the individual situation, like the AIDS patients or the cancer patients that sued for drugs or for the women who need folic acid. They just cannot, it's not part of the of their ability. It's a one size fits all arrangement. And we're all different genetically. Our choices are different. Now, uh, I always use the definition for liberty. Liberty is the exercise of freedom that does not impinge upon the rights of others. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, a lot of people want to help other people. You know, I look at help and I say, is help feeding people for a day? Is help clothing people? Or is help really getting that person to be able to do that for themselves? Mm -hmm. uh, is life really about getting freebies from the government? Or is it a, uh, a how, how to put it, is a life that is worth living. Is, is that the life where you learn how to do it for yourself and then you pass it on to your children and your children's children? I mean, is, is that a life worth living? What would you say? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And, and a lot of people respond to that. I think there are people who also say, gee, well, that's the whole problem. I, I feel like I can't do it for myself and I'm afraid. You know, fear is a big motivator here. And, and of course, the, but when one understands a little more about freedom, you look at it differently. For example, um, what I like to tell people that are afraid, I say, well, you see, here's what happens. It's not manna from heaven that you're getting. It's not coming for free. The money that you're getting is coming from your next door neighbor. You know, it's got to be taken from him or her or the, the whole collective group and given to you. And the problem with that is when they want something, they're going to come after you. And so you're going to take turns being victims and aggressors. And the problem is when you use government to do that, there's a 50% markup. In other words, the government will take $2 from them, but you'll only give $1. When they come to you, they're going to take $2 from you, and they're only going to give one to them. So you all lose. <laughs> it's better to do it yourself. I always heard about government welfare. 70% goes to administrative costs. That's right. Which in Minnesota is almost absurd. I mean, you wouldn't know this, but state law states here that 70% of all money collected by a charity has to go to recipients. Mm -hmm. Which means that our government welfare system doesn't meet its own standards. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's the same with the FDA. They're not safe and effective either. <laughs> and well, that gets you out of the whole thing is, uh, what is safety? Mm -hmm. uh, is, is safety giving up our rights and our ability to make choice? Or is, is safety really us exercising our brain and making our own choices, especially with the internet. I mean, you can do all kinds of research quickly and easily. Well, I don't think there is any true safety. This is the problem. Life isn't safe. You know, um, no matter what you do, let's say, for example, as you decide not to skydive because you think it's dangerous, and then you hop in your car and go to the store and you get hit by a drunk driver and you're killed. I mean, there just isn't any real safety. There's no way to make it perfectly safe. So that's the first thing we have to remember. What we can do is put the probability and the odds in our favor, but we can't make it perfectly safe. And when government gets involved, the problem is the choices they make generally are not the most efficient use of our resources. For example, if, like we were talking earlier, it's crazy to spend all this money developing new drugs when we could use vitamin E instead, or use folic acid, you know, or something like that. It just doesn't make any sense. And this is the problem. Government always costs more. So it just doesn't make any sense to use government that way to protect us. The government officials, like, like you're saying, uh, if there's an extremely tiny, tiny uh, chance that somebody might die, die from something, they're not going to approve it. Even though, by not approving it, there's a much greater chance that people will die. And I'm just thinking of uh, one of the things that happened under Carter was we got the 50 mile an hour speed limit rule. Oh, yes. Um, you know, where we couldn't go more than 55 miles an hour. Well, I was in safety with an insurance company, and we were getting approximately 55,000 deaths every year from motor vehicle accidents. Uh, by dropping it down 
to 55 miles an hour on the freeway, it was estimated that would save 5,000 lives. Okay, all right, but 50,000 is okay, but 55,000 isn't. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Well, now, if you drop it down to zero, then you have no accidents uh, involving cars. But of course, people still need to get around, and, and people used to be trampled to death by horses, run over by carts and, and chariots. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would bet that many more thousands of people died in a horse buggy environment. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes it was kind of convenient that the horse knew the way home. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, you're right. I think I, I saw a study where they actually measured the impact of the speed limits. What happened is more people died. And the reason was is that when people were going at faster speed, they were um, not in the car as long. But when they were at the slow speed, they would add an hour or so to the trip. And what that did is it made them more tired and fatigued, and that's when accidents happened. And there were more accidents, actually, because of the speed limit change. That's what I've heard. So. Well, no, it makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, so anyhow, it just, I guess what we're concluding, and I guess we do need to conclude because I know we're getting, you know, towards the end of the session, but I guess what we're concluding here is government's not the best way to try to protect ourselves and, and relying on the market and its mechanisms may work better for us. And it's more compassionate. Yes. Gives people choice. I mean, I, I could, I just can't believe our government said to the cancer, dying cancer patients, you can't try something to save your lives. I mean, that's cruel. So 16 million people versus 7,000. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I go for the 7,000. Exactly, exactly. Uh, especially with the, the war on, well, a whole other topic, but the war on drugs. <laughs> yes, the other war on drugs. <laughs> anybody ever dies from an overdose in the, uh, with illegal drugs, they're more likely to die from legal drugs. Well, that's, of course, because we take so many, and we, that's another thing. With, with all this protection, it, you would think that there would be some, some thought given to mixing all these drugs, but, you know, some people are taking 20, 30 different drugs a day. I mean, it's crazy. They're never meant to be used that way. I think if your listeners take anything away from this, they should realize that, you know, as I said earlier, there is no drug that's perfectly safe or perfectly effective, and we always need to use them judiciously. And this is from somebody who was in drug discovery for a living. You know, we have to be careful. Right. Uh, my understanding is most drugs, how to put it, uh, in different parts of the body do different things. That's right. That's right. And, of course, we, if we use natural substances, like the vitamins, we'd be better off, fewer side effects. But our government has actually made it very difficult to know about these and to use them. Well, I th thank you, Mary, for, for being on a libertarian viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, this kind of message is very important to people. Uh, libertarians feel that liberty does work. Liberty is always the best choice. And I guess I, I challenge anyone in government out there to, to say, that liberty doesn't bring more safety and uh, certainly never less. Thank you for watching. You have a good day.